And these are today's shoutouts. If you want to see yourself in the next video, then subscribe and leave a comment. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Arky here, and I'd like to ask you a favor. If you find this video useful, please do make sure to subscribe to my channel. Help me grow, and I'm starting to gift subscribers. More info at the end of the video. Please enjoy. What is up boys, Arky here, and today I'm going to show you the best FPS difference that you can get with DirectX 12 and 11. And before we begin, boys, I hope you are subscribed because I'm a small channel and every sub does actually have a huge impact on my channel's growth. So if you enjoy my content and would like to see more, then hit that subscribe button not to miss out on any of my new videos. But yeah, in this video, I'm going to compare the before and after FPS I've got with DirectX 12. The difference is actually insane, just to practically force you to play with the DX12 if you've got a good PC, as it's somewhat of a new feature that's been added like 2 months ago if not less. And not a lot of people have still switched to it, because they feel they're not getting good FPS without it. They might think, oh yeah, I'm getting 60 FPS and up, like I don't need this function. No, you do. It's really important that you do turn it on. It is super important and it does increase your FPS by a lot. And this video is just proof. We will analyze it, see the benefits and how it works. So yeah, this video is just to show you that you absolutely do need to change it and use it properly to get the better FPS in game. And personally, I've got like a 50 FPS increase, but my computer is high-end. And if you know anything about that, then you know that it's going to impact the FPS on lower-end system and mid-tier setups a lot more than mine. Like, I had, for example, 200 FPS, and it turned into 250. And to jump 50 FPS from 200 takes a lot of power. Your CPU and GPU tend to limit the range because they are just too big for them to handle. And that all basically means that if your game is running in like 90 to 100 FPS and you turn on this feature, you are almost guaranteed to have a 100 FPS difference if not more. And how DirectX 12 actually increases your FPS is it works by utilizing all of the cores on your CPU. Here is a picture to basically explain what it changes. And they wrote an article explaining how they did it and what they wanted to achieve. And they basically showed Fortnite as a specific example where they wanted to combat the FPS drops that players usually have mid gunfights. So this feature was added to specifically combat the FPS drops when you're fighting someone on Fortnite with a lot of building and like structures and shooting going on. I'm certain most people just like me even on high end systems were running around and having FPS drops mid gunfights. Just running around the fields and empty towns, I usually had like a solid 200 to 300 FPS. But when someone started shooting or building beside me, that literally turned my game into a 70 FPS game. Like no joke, it felt like 70 FPS. And since then, I started using DirectX 12. It's literally gone. Any sort of lag I felt or just FPS drops are completely gone. They vanished and they don't appear anywhere at all in my game at any point in whatever gunfight I might be in. So yeah, but to benefit from the DirectX 12, the most you need to have is a lot of cores on your CPU. And if you saw the image I just showed you, you might have noticed that video games usually work from only one of your first core or thread is what they call it. So in short, a quick explanation is every single game at the moment uses only the first core of your CPU to run the game. And that means if you have like a 5 or 12 core CPU, so an i3 or i5, it won't change the performance of the game you're getting. That is why i5 and i3s are really popular with gaming to this day. Yeah, you can stream or do a lot of tasks simultaneously with an i3 or an i5, but they won't matter if you're actually just gaming. 
these lower end processors don't have a lot of cores to utilize these programs all at once, but they do have enough power to do one task at a time. But if more games start implementing DirectX 12 like Epic did with Fortnite, then boys the iFreeze and i5 era is gone. It's going to be gone in a flash because it's just not worth it. So if you're also thinking of upgrading your PC sometime soon, don't choose an i5, go with an i7 processor at least, if not an i9. And it's just that simple, because if you compare an i5 to an i7, they both run Fortnite at the same FPS, completely the same core speed. Think about how the i5 has lesser cores and the i7 has more cores in general. And Fortnite is using the same amount of cores from both of these CPUs, so that's only one core, the very first one. You're not gonna see an FPS increase on the i7. Fortnite is not using every core that it can on both of the CPUs. So what happens when you turn on DirectX 12 with an i7, it becomes a killer machine. It just doubles the FPS that you can get on an i5, even if they both had the exact same FPS before turning the DirectX 12 option on. But don't be discouraged boys, an i5 will still get a big FPS increase as well. I'd say look for anywhere from 40 to 50 FPS increase if you're running your game at like 100 FPS right now. So yeah, this option is highly recommended for all of the CPUs. The main problem is getting people to switch because I have a lot of friends who I play with and they say that they never turned it on because they just got so used to Epic adding a lot of functions and they're just basically not working and actually decreasing your FPS every single time and they're also buggy. And I totally understand them because boys, we had ray tracing added and it's just a useless option if you're trying to play competitively. And I think they actually did it because Fortnite on PS5 will use it. But I'm not sure about that so we're gonna have to wait and see. And I know the PS5 is already released but I didn't hear much about it supporting ray tracing. And anyways boys, when Amazon gets a new shipment of the PS5s, you can be sure that your boys gonna have a brand new console to review you and give tips on it as well. So yeah, at the moment I'm still stuck with my old gen consoles. Just wait a little bit until they are back in stock and I'll get one. And here is actually some gameplay with DirectX 11 and as you can see the FPS is definitely lower. But don't look at the FPS number that's constantly being updated because it will be harder to see the actual FPS difference. Keep the focus on the right arrow. That is the maximum frames we've got and it updates I think every half a second. It's a lot more clear and you can really see the difference with it. And I'm landing in these exact spots for both clips and that's salty towers. So yeah, as you can see, even on my FPS numbers, I still get a big increase. It may be hard to see if you don't really look for it because the FPS jumps a lot when it's that big, but there is a big increase, believe me. I played for years on that exact FPS with DirectX 11 and when I switched to DirectX 12, it felt so smooth and especially in gunfights, boys. The drops are no more, they are gone. Epic literally fixed it by implementing this feature and it's amazing because it was so frustrating when you've got like 200 FPS but the moment you get into a gunfight and there was a lot of objects or players and also buildings being built that really decreased the FPS and made your game unstable. But now if you turn on DX12 it's all gone. So yeah, if the FPS increase is not enough reason for you, then the FPS drops in gunfights must be enough reason for you to switch. Because if you suffered from them, then you know how hard it is to actually drop from like 200 to 50 frames mid gunfight. It's frustrating, it's bad, and now Epic finally fix it so yeah be sure just to switch over to DX12 to fix that. But on to our next point and I really want to highlight how the competitive scene will shift with this new feature and why does it even matter? Well the first thing is you can get like a 100 FPS boost which is insane and second even if you don't get an FPS increase you'll stop getting FPS lag and drops when you're in a gunfight 
or a build off. So how this will affect your game and the competitive scene is, imagine that everyone is now switching to PS5s and new gen consoles. If you're a PC gamer, you're gonna be at a disadvantage because consoles are all getting 120 FPS update very soon. It's not out yet, Fortnite is only locked at 60 FPS, but trust me boys when I say that it will be really soon. Like the consoles were literally built for 120 Hz. And if Fortnite doesn't use them, then it's gonna be a disaster. The game will be less competitive and pros may switch to other games or even start playing on PC for the higher refresh rates. But that won't happen because Epic knows the community and the importance of the new gen consoles and that the main selling point of their game is gonna be the 120Hz support and how smooth the game will be on the new gen consoles. So my guess, Epic is actually waiting for Sony or Xbox to actually come out and say, hey dude, we're actually really seeing how Fortnite is super popular and we'd appreciate if you turned on 120 FPS on Fortnite to actually sell these new consoles to Fortnite gamers. And Epic might be waiting for a little paycheck because it's not a free feature. Everybody wants money, Epic might too. It's just my little opinion, little kind of guess what might be happening. And on top of that, it might be actually the complete opposite reason, as Epic doesn't want their Fortnite players on the lower gen consoles, older gen consoles like PS4 and Xbox to still be playing at 60 FPS, while the new gen consoles, which are a minority at the moment, be playing on 120 FPS. So yeah, PS5 and Xbox are a complete minority. Not a lot of people have them and not a lot of people will play Fortnite on them. And the fact that the 5% of Fortnite players will be playing with 120 FPS while the rest, 95% will be still stuck at 60 on console is absolutely not fair and it will not go free until Epic sees like the charts with players and numbers going up, like the PS5 will have more players players than the PS4 and etc. You get the gist of what I'm trying to say. But back to the point and imagine if you're on a PC. Do you realize that the console players you were up against previously that had a strong aim assist to combat the difference in the FPS that you are getting on a PC and a console? Well, it's just got worse. They still have the aim bot. To step up your game, I feel that you must have a 240Hz monitor and not a 144 hertz or even less on a computer, especially for 2021 competitive scene. And if you don't, then you're just gonna be at a competitive disadvantage. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful, boys. If you did, then be sure to hit that subscribe button down below not to miss out on any of my new videos. I make content that helps you improve at the game and become a better player. And with the channel my size, which isn't big, a sub really means a lot, boys. So thank you very much if you're subscribed. That's actually the reason why I do subscriber shoutouts at the start of my every video. Because because you matter and your sub matters as well. So yeah boys, I hope you understand and give me the support. I'll see you in the next one and as always, peace. Hey guys, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoy and find it useful. If you want to join my future battle pass and V-Box giveaways, do make sure to easily apply by subscribing and leaving a comment with your Fortnite username. I will be choosing 5 random people in the near future for weekly gifts. Peace.